So in this video, I'm going to answer a question that gets asked regularly in some of my courses about how I set up my screencasting when I want to record a Skype interview with another subject. Well, I'll talk about that in this video. Okay, so this video is actually going to be a, have a few moving parts to it here. So we're going to try to do it in three segments. Okay, the first segment we'll talk about how I set up uh, on my computer and what the equipment is that I use. And the second part, then we'll talk about how, I'll show you how I actually then begin the Skype recording and then my screencasting software as well on top of that. So we're recording a recording, okay? And then the third part, we'll talk about some of the different tips and tricks about editing it so it looks pretty slick when you're doing it and finally publishing it out for your audience. Okay, so in this first video, let's talk about the whole setup here, okay? Now, before I get started, I just want to address a real quick question that might be in some of you uh, veterans' minds about uh, some easy easy software that you can use. And in fact, if you're on a Macintosh platform, you can use uh, something called Ecamm. Let me just show it to you real quick. It's actually called Cam Recorder. So if you go to ecamm.com, you can see here ecamm.com. You can go out there. There's a product that they have called Call Recorder for Skype. You can actually use that. Perhaps we'll dedicate another uh, another video that talks just about how to set that up, but that's also some, an option that you can use. In any case, what I found is even when I use Call Recorder, which by the way works very well, it's in that editing stage is where you'll still need screencasting software, like one of the big three, to edit that if you want to do some editing on that. And typically I like to uh, kind of polish it up a little bit, and so this is where we will need some screencasting software. But the lowest common denominator is if you don't want to pay the $20, or I think of what what that costs, which is very nominal, uh, then you can easily do the same thing using your screencasting software. Now, I'm going to be doing this today, showing you how to use, how to do all this setup using Skype for Macintosh and also um, Camtasia for Macintosh. That's, those are the tools we're going to be using in this video. But just keep in mind, everything that we're doing here, they have the same counterparts on the PC side. Everything I'm, you'll see me do in Camtasia Macintosh, you can do in Camtasia Studio, and I'll include screenshots somewhere on this website, either down below or off to the sidebar, depending on where you're watching this video from. And if you're using ScreenFlow for Macintosh, you also have similar counterparts, you know, little features and settings in there that are actually work very similar and they look very similar uh, as to the ones I'm going to be showing you here in Camtasia for Macintosh, okay? So with all of that said, here's my setup. So whenever I do these uh, Skype interviews, I'm always actually thinking that there's at least two eyeballs and possibly even three eyeballs. And typically I do it with the content, with the idea of three eyeballs. The first eyeball is obviously going to be my perspective. So when I'm saying eyeballs, I'm thinking video cameras, okay? So one eyeball is going to be my perspective. The second eyeball is going to be the perspective of my interviewee, the subject. So typically that's going to be a face-to-face, -face, so kind of a head-on view. But then the third eyeball in the room, the view, is going to come from your audience view if you, if you decide to include a camera for your audience. So this is my setup here. Uh, let me go ahead and just kind of show you from my perspective over here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my iPad, my iPhone here, and just kind of show you from my angle what I'm looking at. So we'll turn this guy on, and what you can see is there's that camera, which is the one that you're looking at me from right now, and that happens to be a DSLR camera. But you can easily use also this uh, webcam right here. So whenever typically, I usually don't like using webcams, but when I'm doing Skype interviews, sometimes I like to have this view directly for my subject. So that's going to be the one that my subject, my interviewee, is going to be looking at me from. And typically, my audience is going to come from either a DSLR or this camera, another offset camera right over here. So this on this display right here is actually going to be that webcam view. So I'll select that as my my camera uh, view that's that my audience is that I want to have my audience see the interview from to include their my audience. Okay, so that's that. And then obviously I'm going to be using my Yeti desktop microphone, but you can use many you know other types of microphones as well. If you have a question, just go ahead and ask. Uh, and then what else are we going to be using? The other thing is we're not going to, well actually I may use this one. This happens to be what's called a, uh, a Logitech C920. It's a separate webcam that you can actually detach and then put into the side here. I'll show you how this works later on, but this can easily be put up on top here as your little detachable uh, webcam. The reason I like to have something like that is because when I have my audience view, 
I typically want to have it in such a way that my audience has a different perspective than the, uh, than the view that my subject, my interviewee, is looking at me at. Okay, so my interviewee should be looking at me face on, but my audience might be a little bit offset. So I typically have to ha want, like to have that 15 degree offset from uh, the plane of my presentation, okay, when I'm including my audience. So let's start doing all of the plumbing here. The very first thing I want to do is bring up Skype because that's what I'm going to be using here for this interview. So there's two pieces of software that we're going to be using when I, when I set all this up. Skype is going to be the one that I talk to my interviewee through. And then the screencasting software is going to be solely for the purpose of my audience who's going to be offset a little bit from this whole thing. So they're sort of the fly on the wall watching this thing from the side. All right, so what I want to do here is just show you how I set up Skype to make sure that we're capturing and being able to talk to our subject directly. So when I bring up Skype, I'm going to go ahead and go to Skype and then somewhere hit the preferences menu. If you're using the Windows version, you'll probably have a tools option on your menu and then there'll be uh, an options or something like that under the sub menu. But there will be a place for you to choose uh, this op this uh, some video options and so on. So in this particular version, I'm using Skype for Macintosh here, but again, you can do the same thing in uh, Skype for Windows. There will be different options here on how Skype is set up. You can pretty much set all of these however your preferences are, but the one I want to point to here is audio and video. So when you click that guy, there's going to be an option here to define what your microphone source is going to be and also what your, uh, what your camera, any secondary camera sources are. So in this case right now, I have the FaceTime camera that's coming right from this Macintosh, this uh, laptop right here, but I can also define an off-site camera like this one right over here as my secondary camera source. So if I was to then select this other one here, which is this camera angle, you'll notice how that kind of changes here, right? Now, that's going to be my audience view. However, I don't typically use Skype as the video for my audience. I like to use Skype as the video for my interviewee to see me through, okay? Because chances are my interviewee will also be using Skype and it's kind of rude to kind of be looking away from him or her as you're talking and doing the interview. So my interviewee should see this, right? Okay, so when I'm talking to my interviewee, I should be looking directly in the camera at him or her. So that's kind of how I set up here. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing I might point out here, uh, so there's a camera angle. The only other thing I'll point out here is this microphone source. It, right now it says built-in microphone or built-in internal microphone. Now, by and large, you know that from other videos, you, you know that I'm, I'm not an advocate of using built-in microphone. So more often than not, I actually like using something else, like a desktop microphone. There's a uh, company called Blue Microphones that you can use. Uh, go to blue, bluemic.com. I'll put the, here's the, there's the, uh, the link right down there, okay? So you go to bluemic.com. This one happens to be called a, a Yeti, all right? Kind of big. Uh, and then it's a USB microphone. There are other types of microphones that they have. Another one that's very popular is uh, Snowball uh, at, from Blue Microphone. Uh, so you can take a look at that. In any case, when you plug this in here, I typically like to use this. Right now you don't see Yeti in the menu selection here for microphone. So let me just go ahead and plug it in here. So when I plug that puppy in, it takes a little while for it to recognize it, and there's the Yeti stereo microphone that comes in there. I'm going to go ahead and select that, and then you just want to make sure these bars are moving along here. So we've got the audio source locked in. This is the one I'm going to be using to talk to my subject. And then the camera that my subject is going to be looking at me from is the one that comes right off of here. Okay, that's this one right there. All right, so that's basically the setup for Skype. And so when I'm done with that, we'll just go ahead and close that window out. So Skype's all set up here. Now the other one I want to do before I actually call my interviewee, okay, is to set up my audience view. And for that, we're going to use a screencasting software. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use Camtasia for Macintosh. In other video, in the, but you can also, if you have other software that you're using, you can use Camtasia Studio for PCs. It works just as well. Uh, and you can, if you're using ScreenFlow for Macintosh, you can do the same things here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up Camtasia for Macintosh. All right, so there's the editor. And again, if you want to know more about how to use any of these software, either Camtasia Macintosh, ScreenFlow, or Camtasia Studio, just hit my uh, course on digitalknowhow.com or search for my name, Mel Aclero, at udemy.com, and you can find my courses about how to use these things, uh, these different software. So here in Camtasia for Macintosh, one of the things is the, the main thing is going to be the configuration editor. Okay, so when you click that record button, as you know from my courses, you'll see that this configuration window comes up. I'll have screenshots down either down below or off to the side that shows what the configuration window should also look like for, say, um, 
for Camtasia Studio or for ScreenFlow. But here, basically, you're going to have different options. One is going to be your screen recording. And again, keep in mind, we're using the screencasting software for the audience view. Skype is for your interviewee, OK? So for the audience view, I want the audience to be able to see what's on my screen. So we're going to make sure that that's green, that that's, op, that's selected, and that we've got the correct monitor selected. And this one, this one happens to be called Color LCD. Thunderbolt display happens to be this other one over here. So I want to make sure Color LCD is selected. So I'm going to select that. And that's going to be this one. Everything that's on this computer is going to get recorded. The other thing is right now camera, this other camera angle is off. I'm going to actually turn that on. And there's going to be a couple of options in there. So there's going to be this display monitor that's coming from actually this one or this uh, built-in camera right over here. OK, so right now let's go ahead and select built-in. And just to show you what that looks like, that's this guy here, OK? But again, remember, this is the view that I want for my interviewee. And I don't want to confuse my audience about that. So I want my audience to have a different perspective. Audience goes with screencasting software. So I'm going to select an off-site camera that is offset a little bit, that is, the, that is going to be this camera. This camera happens to be 15 degrees offset, OK? So I want to set that up. Now, the other thing. Hopefully I'm not confusing you here, but just keep in mind, there's different, there's different configurations. You have a lot of options here in terms of what camera sources, what microphone sources you use. Okay? So this is one thing, but many of you, I recognize that many of you might say, well, I don't have a second monitor that has a webcam in it. Okay? No problem. You can go to Logitech.com. This one happens to be a C920E. Okay, and there's another version called the C930E, I think, is uh, actually the next one up that I think uh, that I personally would like to have. But right now, I have a C920. You can easily get these. It's a USB webcam. And the beauty about this is, it's, see how it's uh, detachable? So you can take this guy. And if you don't have a, you know, just this type of a monitor here, then you can plug this into your USB microphone or your USB port. And so when you plug that guy in there, there, now you can see that the Logitech now shows up as one of your angle sources. So if I select that, notice what changes down in here. Okay, so now I've got this move, this thing I can move around. It's kind of like this Hill Street Blues action, right? But the nice thing about this is now you can actually take this and you can plug it, you can you know, flip this little ditty off here, right over here, and then you can just pop that right on top of your, uh, your other monitor. Or you can, this is about $100, I think, or $80. Uh, or you can get one of these portable tripods, which I think I got this one for like $20 or something from Amazon or from Best Buy or something like that. So it's detachable and you has the telescopic legs here. Okay, So now you have a little bit more options here. So you can take your webcam, screw that right into there. And then you can set that up off to the side. Again, this is going to be the angle that my audience views, at, views me from. Very easy to set up. And you, you know, the nice thing is, just a little uh, tip, a lot of times when I'm going to my annex, my off, what I call my office annexes, which is just basically any local park that I can find myself in or a Starbucks location, this is what I'm using when I, when I do that. But that's going to be my, uh, my audience view. Okay? So I might just want to get this microphone out of the way here a little bit. So everything's kind of configured, kind of set up. There we go. So that's my configuration. So I've just set up the screen is going to be recording uh, the person I'm talking to. Anything that moves around on my screen could be because we might also want to be showing PowerPoint presentations or looking at websites or something like that. So that's being recorded. That's going to be here. We're we've got a camera source now selected, which in this case, we're going to use that Logitech camera that I have selected here. So that's this guy right there, maybe just a little bit. Fix the angle just a little bit, OK? So that's going to be my, my audience. So as I'm interviewing my, uh, my subject, every now and then I want to look at my audience and, you know, and bring them into the conversation a little bit, OK? So that's how you kind of get this a little bit more engagement with your audience and so on to include them in the conversation. So I've got that selected. So obviously now also the other thing is when I have turned on the Yeti microphone because that's going to be my sound source, okay? Because it's the same one that we're using on Skype to talk to my interviewee. 
uh, but it's the same one that I also want to include my audience in. So we'll have that selected as well. And then the other one is system audio. So we're kind of turning everything on here like, like a Christmas tree. We're turning all of these things on. And the reason we want to have system audio is because when I'm using Skype, to talk to my subject over the internet, when my subject or my interviewee talks, he or she's voice is going to, him, his or hers voice is going to come through the computer. And whenever it comes through the computer, that's going to be system audio. Some of the other software packages, you might have this select called uh, computer audio or something along those lines. But that's basically computer or system audio is what you want to also have turned on. Basically, all of these things should be on when you're using the screencasting editing software. So that's basically the setup. So again, we have a couple things going on here. We have this is the configuration window for uh, Camtasia, uh, for a screencast editor. And then we've also already set up the configuration for the preferences in Skype. And these are the ones that's, that's related. The ones in Skype are the ones that's related to interviewing our subject. And then the ones for the configuration for Camtasia are the ones that's related to including our audience. In the next video, I'll show you how to actually now use these to set up and begin the interview. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.